Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and we are taking a look today at the Detroit Red Wings who are going to miss the postseason once again. They have officially been eliminated from the 2022 Stanley Cup playoffs. So we'll be going over what went wrong for the Red Wings. What's the future look like for the Red Wings and everything that kind of played into where we're at today. So we'll go over that. So the Detroit Red Wings, let's be honest, to start things off. They were in a tough division to begin with. You look at the four big teams that we talked about in the beginning of the year. Yeah, they kind of were the four big teams in the Atlantic. And not really much has changed here recently. The climate has kind of stayed the same in the Atlantic. It's, you know, the big guys up in the Northeast. It's Boston, Toronto. Then you go to the, you know, the Southeast. You've got Florida and Tampa. Those are your four teams right now in the Atlantic division. And everybody else is kind of just kind of stumbling their way around, including the Red Wings. Uh, but the Red Wings, there's promise here. And even when you saw last season, they were one of the worst teams in the league. But when you were watching the games, if you watched the Red Wings games, you could tell that, you know, as much heat as Jeff Blaschel has gotten here over the past two years, he has done a very nice job with the team that's on the ice. And Steve Eisman has mentioned that before. Listen, I'm not going to fire Jeff Blaschel for what this team has been the past two years. This has not been a product that you can win with. And he's not blaming Jeff Blaschel for that. I think that's incredible that he's able to deflect the blame, saying, listen, this is part of the process, and we need to be patient with Blaschel. And the Red Wings have definitely done that. Now, looking at where they're at, this is a team that has now missed the playoffs for a sixth consecutive season. Now, that's kind of interesting because I just made a video talk about the Hurricanes, how they went almost a decade missing the postseason, and now they're going to make their fourth straight playoffs. It's kind of interesting how you know these windows kind of open and close for teams. Before this six-year stretch now that the Red Wings are in of no playoffs, they were on a 25-year playoff streak, which was the longest in NHL history. They won four cups in that stretch. You look at like how many captains they had. God, they had Zetterberg, Larkin, Lidstrom, Iserman. I mean, absolutely incredible Hall of Fame guys in that 25-year stretch. And just different eras of the organization. So for the Red Wings, this almost seems like peanuts. It's just six years, whatever. But it is a lot. It's a lot easier to tear down than it is to rebuild. And I think that's where the Red Wings are at right now. Steve Eisman has done a great job. You look at this team on the ice, though. Yes, they didn't make the playoffs. You know, maybe they didn't play as meaningful games as they would like in April. Now, nobody really in the East did. I, I mean, you could pretty much clinch everybody at this point in the Eastern Conference. It's just a matter of where everybody's going to sit. Are they first wild card, second wild card? You get the kind of the, the gist of it there. But the Red Wings are one of those teams right now that they have so much future promise. Alex Nedeljkovic has been incredible in his first season in Detroit. Carolina decided to let him go. You know, Tom Dundon and the Hurricanes staff said, listen, we don't want to bring this guy back. He wants more money than we're willing to offer. Eisman said, yeah, we're going to take that guy for a second and third or whatever they gave up. Something really cheap to acquire Nedeljkovic and now they have a really good goalie there, at least for the time being, right, as a bridge goalie. Not to mention they have some of the rookies that came in. I mean, Lucas Raymond has been incredible, probably going to win Rookie of the Year. And if it's not him, it's going to be the defenseman, Mo Sider, who was a kind of shocking pick back in 2019 for the Red Wings and wasn't supposed to be the guy that, you know, was supposed to be picked at six. He was supposed to be a mid to late first round draft pick and then in 2020 Lucas Raymond Red Wings fans were furious they did not get the Quebec uh, kid from Ramouski uh, Alexi Lafreniere who ended up being a Rangers draft pick so they were very upset that they went from the first best odds to getting the first pick they end up getting the fourth overall pick they have a guy that has the potential to win rookie of the year that is just incredible and that shows you the depth of that draft class right now you look at those guys Byfield Stuchla Lafreniere, all three of those guys picked ahead of Raymond, and in less games played, Raymond has better stats than all three of those guys that predecessed him in that first round. So, kind of interesting to see how Lucas Raymond has developed, and again, that's under Jeff Blashill. 
um, you look at, you know, that's been the story. It's it's the amazing rookies that have kind of come in and turned into really good hockey players on an organization that, like I said, has not had a lot of promise recently. I mean, they've been bottom five in the standings for the past really four or five years now, six years now. Um, but there's a lot of you know, there's a future here. And there's going to be a lot of changes here down the line. I mean, there's been talk, you know, they need to move out some forwards here because they don't have the money or really the, you know, kind of the Florida Panthers situation. It's the curse of too much talent. You know, you have guys that should be playing in the top six, like a Philip Zadina, who are playing on the third line and, and not really in the role that they should be. That's a guy you can maybe see getting traded this summer. Not to mention, there's been a lot of ties. I know my Red Wings fans out here will definitely be vouching for this. Um, there's a certain player in Tampa Bay, probably not going to return to the Bolts this summer, uh, Andre Palat. Steve Eisman had really good ties with Palat. Drafted Palat in Tampa. There's been a lot of ties to Palat going to the Red Wings this summer. And uh, I think that would be a really interesting move for the Red Wings. And I think that's something that you're kind of looking at going into the future. If there was a lock on a guy I could see going to Detroit this year, it is Andre Palat. I'm not saying it's a certain thing, but when it does happen... I'll just say I told you so. Uh, but as of now, the Red Wings, like I said, they're they're probably not going to do too much in terms of changes. Like overall, they have the core guys there. It's just letting them develop. You know, a lot of these guys like Cider, like Raymond, this is their first NHL season. So once you get a little more time in the league, developing, playing meaningful games down the stretch, you build that through experience and just kind of going through it. And this, you know, as much as you could teach it through skill, it's actually being out there and getting the seasoning in order to get to that next level, which inevitably will be the Red Wings, uh, hopefully soon. Looking at right now where they're on track to be, I say maybe another year here that they don't make the playoffs next season. But I wouldn't be shocked if they made the playoffs next year. And the only reason I say that they probably won't make it is because a lot of it depends on what the teams around them do. Tampa, uh, Toronto, Boston in particular, those three teams, how are they going to look next year? Because if Boston loses Patrice Bergeron, if Toronto in the next two years loses Austin Matthews, if we start to see a shift in Tampa, maybe some of their guys starting to maybe retire at some point, right? Like you're looking at teams that, not that their window is closing, but there's a room, there's a little bit of an opportunity for them to start to squeeze their way back into the playoff picture. Because right now, like I said in the beginning of the video, those are the four top teams by a large margin in the Atlantic. And then there's everybody else. There's Detroit, Ottawa, Montreal, and Buffalo. And nobody talks about those four teams, even in the playoff picture especially with how things have gone for those other organizations here over the past couple of seasons. So guys, let me know what you think down below. What do you think of the Red Wings? Do you think they get to the postseason in 2023? Or do you think it's more like 2024? Let me know down below. Guys, thank you so much for watching and let's go Red Wings.